Part of our plant making process, the first step was making this plaster of Paris mold of the real leaves. Next step is I take a piece of vacuum form vinyl and lay that plastic in place, pull the heating element, and there we have our basic sycamore leaves. To build dioramas today requires an extensive collection within the Natural History Museum and their departments. What we would have to have is the museum's departments, their mammalogy department or their ichthyology department, would have to have a large collection of skins that had been collected in years past and would still be in good enough condition for them to be able to be used as a taxidermied specimen. Today we call it biodiversity. Then it was just a matter of collecting specimens to help with furthering the knowledge of the scientific community through classification of all of these specimens. We have here is a California quail. Um, which is, of course, California's state bird. This one happened to be picked up up in the Owens Valley as a, a roadkill, and it's got a few injuries, but we'll be able to work with that and still make it into a realistic mount for our LA's backyard exhibit. I like using the complete leg bone when I uh, set legs because it gives me full latitude now However I want to position that bird, whether it's crouching, whether it's walking, whether it's stretched out, I can put that bird into the proper position. So now I'm just starting to sew. I'm just trying to ease the skin together and then just kind of double checking to make sure the, like the spot here on the belly is, and the scale pattern is lining up where it needs to. And close the final part of my incision. Now I need to fluff it a little bit. And then I'll be ready for what really is on a bird the most fun, playing with it after you get it together, develop its shape, its attitude. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to say? These dioramas truly represent a artistic genre that is extremely important, not only for the background murals that were painted, but also for the craftsmanship in the development of the three-dimensional modeling that was done, creating a lifelike environment. We have an oak, an oak that came out of a burn, so it was dead. And uh, of course, I want to make it a live oak. So areas that where it's lost the bark, or areas I've had to splice in with Bondo, I'm going to take this two-part epoxy, and I'm going to spread it out over that area, and then use a texture mold that I made in Arizona to create my, my bark. These museum dioramas actually serve a very important purpose they actually have created pictures in time, a time that no longer exists and becomes more important as we progress as a culture, that we're never going to be able to go back to these places and recapture that. Where you look today, species are becoming extinct. Uh, and these dioramas actually still contain many of the specimens that no longer exist. We're in danger 
of becoming extinct and this becomes the only record that we have not just of the animals but also of the plants that existed the way the environment existed you can actually go back and look at the murals at the back of the dioramas and get a sense of what the climate was like at that time versus what it's like today because these were really in a lot of ways a personal history of the humans who actually went and produced these dioramas.